In this app, we're going to load two different kinds of JSON into Swift structs, one for astronauts and one for missions. Making this happen in a way that's easy to maintain and doesn't clutter our code takes some thinking, but we'll work towards it step by step. First, drag in the two JSON files for this project. These are available in the GitHub repository for this book under Project 8 Files. Look for astronauts.json and missions.json. Then drag them into your project navigator. While we're adding assets, you should also copy the images into your asset catalog. These are in the images subfolder. The images of astronauts and mission badges were all created by NASA, so under Title 17, Chapter 1, Section 105 of the US Code, they're available for us to use under a public domain license. If you look in astronauts.json, you'll see each astronaut is defined by three fields. An ID, such as Grissom or White. Their name, such as Virgil I. Gus Grissom, and so on. And a short description that's been copied from Wikipedia. If you intend to use that text in your own shipping projects, it's important to give credit to Wikipedia and its authors, and make it clear the work's licensed under CC by SA, available from creativecommons.org. Let's convert that astronaut data into a Swift struct now. Press Command N to make a new file. Choose Swift file, then name it astronaut.swift. Give it this code. Struct astronaut conforms to codable and identifiable. Let ID string. Let name string. Let description string. As you can see, I've made that conform to codable so we can create the struct straight from JSON, but also identifiable so we can use arrays of astronauts inside for each and more. That ID field will do just fine. Next, we want to convert astronauts.json into an array of astronaut structs, which means we need to use bundle to find the path to the file, load that into some data, and pass it through a JSON decoder. Previously, we put this kind of thing into a method on content view, but here I'd like to show you a better way. We're going to write an extension on bundle to do it all in one centralized place. Create another new Swift file, this time called bundle-decodable.swift. This will mostly use code you've seen before, but there's one small difference. Previously, we used string contents of to load files into a string. But because codable uses data, we are instead going to use data contents of. It works in just the same way as string contents of, Give it a file URL to load, and it returns either its contents or throws an error. Add this to bundle decodable.swift now. Extension bundle func decode underscore file string returns an array of astronaut. Guard let URL equals self dot URL for resource file with extension nil. Else fatal error fail to locate file in bundle. Guard let data equals, try question mark, data, contents of URL. Else, fatal error, fail to load file from bundle. Let decoder equals JSON decoder. Guard let loaded equals, try question mark, decoder.decode, array of astronaut.self, from data, else, fatal error, fail to decode file from bundle. And finally return loaded. As you can see, that makes liberal use of fatal error. If the file can't be found, loaded or decoded, the app will crash. As before though, this will never actually happen unless you've made a mistake. For example, if you forgot to copy the JSON file into your project. Now you might wonder why we used an extension here rather than a method but the reason's about to become clear as we load that JSON into our content view. Add this to the content view struct now. Let astronauts equals bundle.main.decode astronauts.json. Yes, that's all it takes. Now sure, all we've done is just move code out of content view and into an extension, but there's nothing wrong with that. Anything we can do to help our view stay small and focused is a good thing. If you want to double check your JSON is loaded correctly, modify the default text view to this. Text astronauts.count. That should display 32 rather than hello world.